Genesis chapter 17 We are beginning from verse 1 And when Abraham was 90 years old And I The Lord appeared to Abraham And said that to him I am the Almighty Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Our Ibrahim, we yali ya kamaze emia kachienda mumuenda, mukama na labikila Ibrahim, na mugamba inti, inzeka tonda omoyenza webi ntubiona, tambuli ranga, mumaso gange, oberenga omtu kirivu. I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. Nange, indira gana enda gano yange inze nawe. Era, ndi kwa zanyo. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying Ibrahim na avunama amasoge katonda na yokena na ye inti As for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations Inze laba endagano yange erinawe nawe oliva chita wa mawanga amanje Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham but thy name shall be Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee. So, tocha ayiti wanga na te erinyalio Ibrahim. Na ye erinyalio liye dinabanga Ibrahim. Kuvanga mkufude kita wama wanga amanji. And I make thee exceeding fruitful. And will make nations of thee. And the king shall come out of thee. Erandi kwa zanyo. Erandi kufula ama wanga. Eraba kabaka baliva mugwe. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Yera, denyweza enda gano yange inzenawe, neza derio eri dawo, okutusa emile mbe jawe jona okuwa enda gano, eteri diba, okuwa katonda, eri gwe, neri eza derio eri dawo. And I'll give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, or the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I'll be their God. Era, ndiku wakwe neza derio eri dao ensi, jiwatambuli rangamu ensi yona ea kanani, okujiria emirembe yona, era, nze nabe ranga katonda wawe. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore Thou and thy seed after thee in their generations Katonda na gamba Ibrahimu inti Nawe Gori kwata endagano yange Gwe Neza terio eri dao Okutusa emirembe Mirembe jawe jona This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you And thy seed after thee Every man Child Among you shall be circumcised Eno, yendagano ya ngeje muna kwa tanga Eri nze na mwe Neza derio eri dao Vuli musajja mumwe Anako moruanga Father Disaife We thank you for the reading of the word Tukwe wazolo kusume chigambo And we commit the teaching of it into your hands Elatu wayo kusume sakuwa chua mikonodo For the blessing of your people Ulewe mikisa kubantubo In Jesus name Mulina liya yesu Amen Amen You may be seated Mwizoti amako so I have a very uh, pastoral thought this morning. Brother. Pastoral thought. So I want to speak to you as a pastor. And uh, to make you understand the life that you got through. Uh, now we see here God calls Abraham and he makes a covenant to him and so we want to look at this covenant and understand two things grace and chastisement those two things, that's my subject this morning. Grace and chastisement. Now, Abraham comes out of the land of the child by grace through election. 
He was an evil worshiper like anybody else. But God chose him. And when God chooses you, God calls you out. Amen. God doesn't call you and leave you in a mess. He calls you and separates you from unbelief. Separates you from the nightclub. Separates you from alcohol. Separates you from drugs. Separates you from evil company. Is God a separator? And God said, I'll make of you a great nation. And will bless you. And make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. So Abraham's calling. He was called to inherit a blessing and to be a blessing. And all the seed of Abraham is called exactly on the same pattern. To inherit a blessing and also to be a blessing. I want you to know that wherever you are, you should look at yourself as a blessing. Either at your place of work, you are a blessing. Even in your family, you are a blessing. And when you are all believers in the house, it's blessing upon blessing. Amen. So, you know, the covenant was an unconditional covenant. You know, when God called Abraham, he he was as man as anybody else. He was still struggling. Just like you do struggle. But God calls him. On a non-conditional covenant. And I want you to understand one thing. That if you came here. By a call. A divine call. That call is unconditional. It's a call of grace. God didn't say if you do this, I will do this. And when Abraham entered the land, he made several mistakes. And the greater mistake is when under his human will tried to bring forth a promised son. Amen. God called him and he promised to make a nation out of him and promised to give him a seed. So when he received the promise he accepted the promise. And we see we've got so many promises in the world. But the worst thing in our lives is to try our own way to manufacture a promise. Are you together with me? When God gives a promise, believe it and rest. When God says he'll heal you, believe it and rest. Amen. When he promises to baptize with the Holy Ghost, believe it and rest. It's only God who knows how to bring his promises to pass. God told him he was going to be a father of many nations. God promised him a seed. But God had not told him by who. Amen. Amen. So the promise was to Abraham himself. And so sometimes we really need to believe and rest. We should not try to help God. In bringing forth his promises, we must learn to rest. <coughs> Especially in the area of the bosom of the Holy Ghost. He promised it. You believe it. Rest. That's the way God works. 
God called Abraham. And he wanted to lead him one day at a time. He kept talking to him. And that's the way God wants to deal with you. He doesn't want to give you everything. You may blow up with it. You may have a number of questions in the walk of faith. You are not going to understand everything in one day. But God God wants to move with you on the principle of one day at a time. You come to service on Wednesday. The Lord reveals something. And then you say, oh, I had never known this before. You get down into your study at home and you discover something in the world. You say, oh, I never known this before. When you're praying, you end up praying a certain way and then you say oh I never seen this before that's the way God wants to deal with the life of a Christian never be too fast for God no just rest and wait for God himself to perform his will in your life amen that's the way God wants to deal with Abraham one day at a time you would bring more understanding then more understanding then more understanding that's the way God works with us so in Genesis 15 Abraham thought that Eliezer was going to be his heir but God said no this shall not be thine heir but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thy neighbor. So, you know, he thought so. God called me to inherit a land. He told me that I was going to be a father of many nations. But now I'm not seeing any child. So I think then this Elias of Damascus is going to be my head. But God tells him, no, 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 no. no. It's not Elias. You are going to have your own seed. And in Genesis 16, Sarai, Sarai, before she was connected to the promise, thought hopefully that maybe the son whom God is speaking about is going to come by hunger because I'm an old woman and I don't think I can have any more children. So now Sarah she allowed Abraham to take Hagar and then get a child. Are you together with me? and get a child. And that was exactly like in the original scene when Eve says I've gotten a man from the Lord. Amen. Amen. But that man was after the will of the flesh. Are you together with me? So even this Amen. Amen. Hagar gives birth to Ishmael. But that was not the son of the promise. Amen. So when the promises of the world are quickened to us, we need to stand still and see how God is going to bring to pass that promise. Sarah says, maybe when God said he was pointing at her. But you see there were junctions in the promise. First the promise came to Abraham. Abraham said amen. And he knew that the only way he can bring forth a child was by a wife. 
But then the wife was not conceiving. So God had done with the first segment of the promise. Amen. That the child is going to be yours, Abraham. So Abraham and Sarah needed to wait. So that God could connect Sarah to the promise. Are you together with me? Yeah. You yeah. see, when God is dealing with you, He called you to come and inherit a land. The land of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You receive a call and you come out. But do not be in so much of a hurry. Wait for God to keep adding the segments together until he calls, I mean, until he makes you to possess the land. Amen. So, Later in Genesis 17, the promise is clarified. Amen. Amen. But after Abraham had done a mistake and had got Ishmael, don't run ahead of God. When you look at a promise, believe it, rest. Believe it and rest. Genesis 17 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give you a son also by her. I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now, God is completing the segment now. The promise first comes to Abraham and then Sarah is connected to the promise. But before she was connected to the promise maybe when God said the son will come I think then uh, Hagar is going to be the one we struggle with the promises especially the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost when he said you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost I think he will jump I think you fall. I think you kick. I think you shout. Don't put in your own things. Wait for God to keep connecting to the promise one step at a time. And now here she is. He says you shall not call her Sarah anymore. She is going to be called Sarah. Because she is going to be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Verse 17. And Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. You see laughing at God <laughs> Because the woman is now going like this But God remains God However difficult the promise seems to be If it comes from God He has the ability to make it to pass That's the way we need to start the work Look at the promise Believe the promise Rest 
But Abraham fell. I, I mean Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. And said in his heart. Shall a child be born unto him that's a hundred years old? And Sarah, and shall Sarah, that's 90 years old, bear. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. You see, he is putting in the will of the flesh to subsidize. With the promise of the world. That's a very big problem. God gives us a promise. But we seem to see like it's too difficult. And then you want to make a shortcut with your human will. But God confirms. And says, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. Together with me. He says, indeed a child shall be born. And you know, the covenant of grace never fails. Are you together with me? He was not called out because he merited. But he was an evil worshiper like anybody else. And so God says, you wicked man, I'm bringing you out so that out of you I can manifest a whole nation. That's the basis upon which we were called. He knew how wicked you were. He knew how bad you were. But God on an unconditional covenant calls you out promises you a body change promises you the bottom of the Holy Ghost puts numerous promises in the word and once he brings you out that you can walk your life based on divine promises how possible shall this be indeed Sarah shall have a son Indeed, there will be a transformation in your life. He knew when he was calling you. He knew what capacity, what condition you were. But God, on the covenant of grace, never fails. Out of the old and beaten body, God allowed them to renew their youth in order to bring forth the promise. And I do not know how you feel today. You have tried many times and you see yourself failing. But I want you to look at it from this angle. That God who called you is sovereign. He knows what you to Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Just stay. Walk before me. Amen. Don't deviate. Walk before me. Amen. God allows a time of revival in your life to bring forth the promise of perfection. Amen. Amen. So, in Genesis 15, God promised the children that they would go into a strange land. 
Amen. Amen. They were not there. They were not born. But that was the line of promises. Are you together with me? Those are junctions. Abraham. Abraham. You've not had a child yet. But the child will come. And the nation will come out of him. But after some time. That nation. Will go into captivity in Egypt. But after four generations, I'll bring them back again. Are you together with me? You see, he said to Abraham, Know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. Praise the Lord. And now, you want to get into it. But how do you get into it? Because it's a divine journey. God has been mapping how it goes. And how they end up there. And how he brings them out. When God calls you out, He knew what stages of the journey He was going to take you through. He knew that Abraham would sometimes lose hope. But He knew how to deal with him. One day at a time, He would come and speak more. He would come and speak more promises. And Abraham would say, Amen. And then he's renewed. Many times you lose your hope. But each time you come here, you want God to talk to you. And one step at a time, your hope will always be renewed. And now, Abraham had a son. His name was Isaac. Out of Isaac comes the 12 patriarchs. I want you to listen now. And out of those patriarchs, there was one that was anointed to be a prophet. And his name was Joseph. Amen. He started prophesying about the position. God was going to give him. And he says the sun and the moon will bow before me. And his father says, hey, how? He says, me and your mother to bow before you. And then he says, we're hewing wood. And then we put our shoes standing. But all these other eleven, they fell and paid the prices to mine. But mine kept standing. Those were junctions of the journey. Now God had said they were going to be a great junk, I mean a great nation. But along the junction of the journey, there was a point where God needed a ministry to build up his brethren. Because that was a part of the journey. When you came out, you didn't come out to be a person for the pastor. Maybe follow the pastor or something. Your purpose was to inherit eternal life. 
Isn't that amen? But along the journey to eternal life, God places a junction and puts a minister there. And Joseph was a pivoting point. Amen. Amen. And now, when they rejected the ministry, they had rejected the word, and they went into captivity. Four hundred fifty years, and the nation was retarded. Simply because they did not take that junction seriously. Are you together with me? I said I was speaking as a pastor today. I want you to be careful. Never to reject the admonition of the word. Because it's so important in the segments of your journey. The ministry never comes to maintain you in your weakness, to maintain you in your error. The purpose of the ministry is to correct our lives and to bring us hope. By making the word understood before us. But when the ministry is rejected, that means the word is rejected, and then there comes the chastisement. Are you together with me? The power of the covenant kept hovering over them. Until Okutuka. they served their chastisement. Amen. Amen. They ended up in Egypt. 400. 50 years. They were suffering. But the covenant was over them. You understand what I mean? They were there. But the covenant was hovering over them. 450 years. You must serve your chastisement. Then I bring you back. God raised up a prophet for them in the land of chastisement. That was Moses. They were there. How many of us? First, I don't know what is happening to my life. I try this business, it fails. I try this, it fails. The covenant is over you. But the chastisement. The chastisement and the purpose of the chastisement is to bring you back in the land. Are you together with me? Is to bring you back into the land of chastisement. I mean, into the land of promise. See, so when there are certain things in your life, you can't explain them. They are too heavy for you. You don't know what's happening to your family. You don't know what's happening in your job. Remember that you've not lost the covenant. But the covenant will hover over you until you serve your chastisement. And when you are elect, you can never curse God. However much trouble you go through, you can never curse God. You'll always cry. You'll always cry. And then 
God said in Exodus chapter 3 I have surely seen the affliction of my people I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters and I am come down to deliver them the elect can cry he can go through affliction he has not lost the covenant but God is dealing with his character to bring him back to inherit the land of promise and he told Moses and I am come down to deliver them from slavery into a good land flowing with milk and honey. Now listen. These junctions are very necessary. They went into captivity because they lacked respect for a junction when God blessed a prophet Joseph before them and then he sent them out because the only way he can direct them the only way he could teach them the only way he could correct them was by a ministry and once they didn't take the ministry serious grace abides but go for chastisement and the only way they are to be brought back is still to come by way of the ministry he had to send a prophet again. He told Moses, I am coming to deliver them. Come and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. They fell. By shutting their ear to the word, and the only way they could come back was by opening their ear to the word. They went into the condition by rejecting the ministry. And the only way they could come back was by changing their attitude. Listen. In the message Return and Jubilee. The church now is like Israel. The church is like Israel when it came out of Egypt. When Israel was down there, God, by his marvelous grace, without an organization or anything else, he called Israel to his help. He called them to their inheritance. Grace furnished them a prophet. Grace gave them a pillow of fire. Grace gave them a lamb. Sacrificial land. Grace give them power. Grace give them deliverance. Grace give them victory. Grace give them all these things. And they danced in the spirit and shouted and praised God about it. Hallelujah! They woke up. They changed their attitude. And God says, You move far from me. I also move far from you. But when you come closer to me, I'll come closer to you. So there is no way you can come before God except by the instruments he has blessed. 
There is no other way. How could they come out of Egypt without Moses? How could they come out? How could they apply the token? If there was no minister to direct their junctions. God deals with the elect. Through grace and chastisement. And let me tell you, if you are an elect, you prolong your suffering if you don't break before God. Because he will never leave you. He will buffet you properly. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 6. He said, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth the love of God. Chasteneth. And he scourges every son whom he receives. For if ye end your chastening, God deals with you as with the son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? How many fathers are here this morning? Do you go chastening every little kid in the neighborhood? You don't do that. It's only your child. Not torture. But the purpose is to correct and build character. Sometimes mothers don't understand that. The mother's love doesn't want to see a child cry. But the father's love just in the thirst. In church here, who would want to see another brother go through chastening? Oh, the brother is really suffering. The brother, oh, oh. Oh, oh. brother, 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 but the covenant is over him. The father Baba is building character to bring him back in. But the mother doesn't want to see that. And they say, I will never know. Leave them. Then he says in verse 8, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. He says, if you are not just tired, which is a must for every son, then you are not a son. You are a neighbor's child. And you know who the neighbor is? The devil. Satan. Eh? Yeah. But as long as you are the father's child, there is a need to instill character. But that is done with grace at heart. Grace and chastisement. He says, Furthermore, verse 9, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Amen. Amen. Character build. You get a little kid. You spank him a little bit. Christ coming to you. 
Isn't that right? Achotei kitufo. Yeah, he's crying but coming to you. Alikuila ekaya idayoli. There is that love between the father and the son. And when the chastisement is done, a true child knows that father loves me. Amen. Amen. He says in verse 10 that the fathers of our flesh chastened us after their own pleasure. They wanted us shaped in a certain way. Amen. Amen. But he for our profit. That we may be partakers of his holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says that's the way the father deals with us. So that he can beat out. The character of the world. And build within us. The character that can inherit the land. And he says in verse 11, no chastening of present seems joyous. But finally, it produces peaceable fruit of righteousness. And then there is nothing you can do. Amen. Because if the child is being displeased, and he's crying, what are you going to do? You feel sad that your brother is being chastised. And there are even some of the kids they cry together with another who is being chastised. Fathers, I think you see that. And we do that. You cry with a brother. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that you may touch my brother. I pray that you may help him. I pray that you may bring him out of that condition. But grace has chosen chastisement for him to correct his character. Sometimes those are conditions we have to go through. Because the Father loves us. For 400 years, grace was chastising Israel in Egypt. And still grace brought them back in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because they had election. They were chosen of God. And they are chosen was in the father of Abraham. I mean the father Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, Abraham, I'm going to give you this land and your seed after you. Together with me. And when they were up there loitering in Egypt, their slaves what? Their promise was waiting for them. God was only waiting for them to develop the character that inherits the land. How many of us cry for different promises? Father, I've not seen this. Father, I've not seen this. God only wants you to develop the character and possess the promise. Christ stepped into the body of flesh and when he did he needed natural condition to create in him the character of a kinsman. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He needed it in order to qualify as a worthy kinsman. The Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffered. 
There is no way we can build a character without accepting divine chastisement. Divine correction. Divine instruction. There is no way you can develop character. Because even God himself when he stepped into the body of flesh the character in him had to be built by the things he suffered. Let's go to Philippians 2.8. And being found in a fashion as a man. Era, boyalabikira mu mutindo gw'obuntu. He was not a man. Yali muntu, but he was found in a fashion as a man. Ayalabikira wa mutindo gw'obuntu. He descended into a body of flesh. Yajja mu mbiri ogwenyama. That was born of the virgin. Ogwazali bwemberera. The Bible says he humbled himself. Bible ekobantu yeto waza. And became obedient unto death. Era, yawulira nokutuko okufa. And even the death of the cross. What does that teach us? That human nature can only be humbled by chastisement. Even when God took the human nature there was chastisement that was necessary in order to make him a fit kinsman Amen Are you together with it? Human nature can only be humbled by chastisement but if you are not chastised the same spirit that took them into bondage when they came out it jumped upon Dathan, Kora and Abraham. So there is up and down. When we come down God chastises you up. So that's why at certain times we are up and glorifying God and you say oh God has blessed me this and that and then the next time we meet you you are talking about I just don't know I'm going through things I don't understand because we're coming down that's human nature God wants you back up again Amen. Amen. Do you love him? Mwenda. He builds the church through grace and chastisement. No kanga ivula. Go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 9. Jam chama take in sura eyo mwenda. And verse 5. Oni yolo kutano. He says, not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart dost thou go to possess their land but for the wickedness of these nations the Lord God drive them out from before thee and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham, Abraham Isaac and Jacob understand therefore that the Lord thy God Giveth not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness. For the nature of man is stiff nakedness. Did you hear that? Now you are going back. Is it because you were good in Egypt? No. Men. There was a covenant over you. And now the time to bring this covenant into effect is now. So don't think that you are a nice person. When you go into the land of the bathroom of the Holy Ghost. No, sir. You are there by grace. A 
certain measure of you is living. But the Holy Ghost comes upon your life. Takes you to the land of the bosom of the Holy Ghost. But even in there, there still remains chastisement. That's the way God keeps us up. Even when they entered into the land, Israel needed chastisement to stay under the promise. Grace gives it to you, but chastisement will keep you there. If chastisement is not part of the journey, none of us will make it. So that's why the scripture says Rejoice in your fiery trials Because in them God has a purpose Amen. Amen. Let's go to Jeremiah here. They are in the land of promise. But they needed chastisement to keep them there. And even at the time, even when they entered in there, and they became big headed, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 1 says, the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The word Come to Jeremiah concerning the people of Judah. And when the word came, that was the first year of King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. So verse 2, the which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah, and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem say, from the fourteenth year of Josiah the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that's the three and twenty years, the word of the Lord has come unto me. And I have spoken unto you. Raising Ale and speaking that you have not heard. God would bring the word. He would bring correction. He would bring you know uh, what he wants the people to do. But the people close their ear to the hearing of the word for 23 years the prophet Jeremiah preached and the more they rejected the voice of grace is the more God was building Nebuchadnezzar the tool of chastisement See, he's bringing them up here and they don't want. God says, I know how you are going to come back in. He begins to lift up Nebuchadnezzar here. I don't know what Nebuchadnezzar is raising up around you. Verse 4, and the Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They say, 
And he again now everyone from his evil way. And from the eve of your doing. And dwell in the land that the Lord has given unto you. And to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after the gods to serve them. And worship them. And provoke me. So not a musung was anger with the works of your hands. No more And I'll do you no harm. Nange Sribakola. This is the prophet's king. They were prophesying from evening, morning, evening. And says, You are not hearing. The rejection of the ministry of the word builds up Nebuchadnezzar. They were in the land but they went into the ways of the, the heathens. They therefore needed chastisement. And God always says it. You will go for 450 years. And now in Jeremiah 25 11, he says, And this whole land shall be a desolation. And an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Has God rejected Israel? No, sir. But because they don't hear to maintain themselves in the land of grace, God allows chastisement. In the midst of chastisement, God was on their side. He sent them in Babylon together with the prophets, holy men, pillar of fire, but there was pain. He doesn't send you in chastisement alone. He will always stand by because once a son, always a son. But why should you live as a son when you are a pauper? Eh? When when the promises are there, you are called into a land of promise. But you build pain by rejecting the instruments of service. But after 70 years, they were restored again into Israel in order to receive the Messiah. But when the Messiah came, again they rejected him. So the cycle of life and death never stops. But as God, he is faithful. The covenant remains. He wants to keep you in the covenant. And he wants to do with you like he did with Abraham. One step at a time. Lomo. He comes and visits the church. Brother James Katumba. Brother Andreas from Germany. Maybe if brother so and so from West Nile. One day at a time, they know you are the one. It's the more you enjoy the fruits of the land. But each time they were rejecting the voice, God then would allow chastisement. Listen. Listen. Matthew 27, verse 21. He says, Now this is when they've rejected the Messiah. And the governor said and said unto them, 
Which of two will ye that I release unto you? Christ or the fifth Barabbas? Christ or the fifth Barabbas? Verse 22. Pirate says unto them, What shall I do then? With Jesus, which is called Christ. Yes, They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor says, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And when Pirate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather that a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent. Of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. They invited chastisement. And God had already pointed out what the chastisement was going to be. Again, they would be taken out of the land. In Matthew 24, 18, he was pointing at that time. He said, Never let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter. Neither on the Sabbath day. See? Because he that is with the child cannot run. The days of winter are terrible. And on the Sabbath, the gates of the city were closed. But that happened 37 years. Later, Titus came. Invaded Jerusalem. Invaded Jerusalem. Killed every living thing there. And they fled. Again out of the land. They rejected Joseph. They rejected Jeremiah. They rejected Christ. That's the principle. God allows chastisement. Because ministers, God gives them to you to help you at junctions of life. And each time you reject the advice, the instructions, the corrections, you shipwreck. And you get into chastisement. Amen. Amen. I'll give you uh, the quote here, Brother Branham says. The reason, pray that your flight be not in winter. Judea had snow. Judea. Mm. Judea. 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 Amen. Amen. Pray that your flight be not in winter. Neither on the Sabbath day. Because on the Sabbath day the gates were shut. And they would be caught right in their trap. 
Baba mkate go. If Titus got there on the Friday afternoon, they were besieged in there for the Sabbath. Because the doors were closed. The gates was closed on the Sabbath. There was no coming out, no going out of the city on the Sabbath day. But they had said, let the blood be upon us and upon our children. They called for chastisement. It's each time you don't take the ministry very seriously deep down on the inside you are calling for chastisement. So Israel went out and they only went back 70 years ago to become a nation again. So let me take you into Judges. Now, when God calls you in, He wants to keep you in. He doesn't bring you in to throw you out. It's you who throws yourself out into chastisement. Judges chapter 2. An angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim. And he said, I made you to go up out of Egypt. And I brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As far as I am, I am faithful. I will never break my covenant. But you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore I also say, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be a thorns in your side, and their God shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spoke these words unto the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. He says, I'll never lose my covenant over you. But because you have not taken away these nations, you have not taken away those little attitudes. I'm going to give these nations power to oppress you in the promise. They are in the land but they are living below their uh, below their privileges. Simply because there are certain things they have not thrown out. And they are in the church. They are, they are in the church. They are in the promise. But they want to dress like the world. They want to act like the world. He says, while you are here, you are not outside there, but even here, you will be oppressed if you are not willing to throw certain things out of your life. The attitudes, those are this against that one. Oh, no. This word against that one. This thing about that. It says you've not accepted to throw those things away. 
And people don't know why. They live in a life of bitterness. Living a life of fear. Living a life of rest, of no rest. In the midst of divine promises. But because there are certain things we have not accepted throughout. He told them, destroy all the nations. But they said, ha. <laughs> We, we shall need servants. Let us leave some that here. Hmm? They, 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 and they, they thought servants. they were weaklings. But the Bible says they grew in strength and began to oppress them even in the land of promise. How many things do you suffer with? Secretly, privately, a little drinking here, a little this, a little that, because you didn't allow to throw out everything at once. Those things begin to oppress you even when you are in the church. Listen to what Brother Branham says. And being ministers, we will be judges. And the people to which we have spoken to, and their attitude towards the word that we bring them, will determine their eternal destination. He says, We are ministers. And by a minister, you are a judge. And if the people stick to their attitude, it determines their eternal destiny. Judges chapter 2. Let's continue there. Are you okay this morning? Yeah. The covenant never dies. But you might live a permanently miserable life. Judges 2.11 And I'm speaking to the people that have received the Holy Ghost. Together with me? Yeah. I'm not talking about people who come because mama came or or oh, daddy came or oh, my friend came or oh, my husband came or oh, my wife came no Judges chapter 2 verse 11 listen it's still the rejection and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Bailey and the Lord forsook and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers. Which brought them out of the land of Egypt. And followed other gods. Of the gods of the people that were round about them. And bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. So that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. The conditions of Egypt upon them in their own land. They cannot sing the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord 
Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Huh? They could not sing it. They were miserable in the promise. Why? God told them, kill them. And they spared them. God said, throw everything out. And he spared the rest. Mm, it's true, but mm -mm. it's true, but this one here is not dangerous. This is not so bad. And after all, who will know in church? This one is not so bad. You put on a dress. All your neck is down. You put on a dress like you're poor in treat. This is not so bad. God loves obedience. And God blesses obedience. Once you obey the word, the blessings will come. Amen. He says. They were greatly distressed. And verse 16. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges. God who is rich in mercy. He kept raising up judges. And the judges again would bring the people out of that junction to bring them to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 17. He says, and yet they would not hearken unto their judges after their deliverance. They went a whoring after the gods again. And bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way again. But verse 18. And when the Lord raised up judges, then the Lord was with the judge. The victory was always with the ministry. And as long as the people would take the ministry and take it very seriously, it always brings a freedom for the people. Somebody say amen. That's what it is. A minister is not just some form of a decoration around. But God speaks to the minister on the needs of the people. And once the people take that seriously, the people get their deliverance. But again, the cycle of life and death continued. They kept doing that, and God in his master sends a judge. It's always grace and chastisement. Are you together with them? What is it? It's always grace, chastisement. Grace, chastisement. It's the cycle. When you see things are going wrong in your life, in your family, in your business, in your work, stop a bit. Is it a trial? Am I closing my ear to the word? Lord help me. He will always come down and help you. But because he loves you, he chastises you. The prophet says, he may commit you to suffering as he did Job. 
That's his prerogative. He is sovereign. But it's all with the purpose. If he did not have the purpose, then he would be the author of frustration and not of peace. His purpose is that after we have suffered a while, we would be made perfect, be established, strengthened, and settled. As Jacob says, he puts strength in us. You see himself suffered. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He was actually made perfect by the things that he suffered. So when you are going through your suffering, through your trials, no, somehow or somewhere, God's hand of grace is upon me. He wants to restore me back into the promise. In plain language, the very character of Jesus was perfected by suffering. And according to Paul, he has left his church a measure of suffering that they too by their faith in God while suffering for him would come to a place of perfection. Unless we suffer with him, we cannot reign with him. You have to suffer to the reason for this is that character simply is never made without suffering. Character is a victory, not a gift. So teach it about. And the little temporary suffering we go through now is not worth it to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Somebody say amen. Grace. Chastening. Grace. Chastening. Chastening brings us the center to enjoy the blessings of grace. Revelation 3.18 I want to finish. I counsel thee to buy of me God tried in the fire that you may be rich and white raiment that you may be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with thyself that thou may rest and may, may see as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Zealous, therefore, and repent. Wherever you see a rebuke, repent. Wherever you see a chasten, repent. That's God's love to you to keep you at the center of grace and enjoy the blessings of grace. Listen. The curse of God is tough. It's to the point. He directs this last day church to one hope. That hope is himself. He says, Come to me and buy. Come to me and die. That's what the scripture says. God tried in fire. If you don't want trials, you are trading with the wrong person. You are trying. 
trading with the wrong person. But he says, come to me and buy. In other words, come to me and be patient in your trials. Be patient in your chastisement. That way, you are buying God side in fire. Don't deal in the natural God. Where you want to grow rich, we want that God tried in fire. Which is divine character. To keep us at the center of grace. That's the bride that Christ will resurrect and rapture away. Some people may not see that rapture. But once you are chastened and you humble yourself at the chastening of Jehovah, he keeps you at the center of grace. And all your prayers become amen. All your prayers become amen. You just let it be like that, then the Lord does it. Amen. Amen. Amen means let it be. Why? You are at the center. You are in the promises of grace. He has brought you to the land. You should lack nothing. You should not lack joy. You should not live in a land of fear. Amen. You just lift up your heart. And you say, Heavenly Father, to the best of my desire, I want to be at the center of the land of grace. And that I may enjoy the blessings of Jehovah. They rejected the ministry and they were beaten out. And when they were brought in, they did not want to throw everything out. And right in the promise, they were afflicted by certain things that they refused to throw out. May God be gracious that we may throw away everything that blocks the pipe of God's blessings and let God's blessings flow towards you like a water tap how many need those blessings today may those blessings flow your way amen I believe you are in the land amen that's why you come here because you accept the word but now those personal elements God told you to destroy destroy them and then see the blessings of Jehovah God bless you God bless you brother Moses do you love him yeah God loves you as men as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous and repent. Finished, and you see the blessings of Jehovah. And it will flow towards you like an open water tap. God bless you.